Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I won't be long. I want to commend the previous speaker on his presentation. And I believe the spirit with which he delivered, Mr. Speaker, is the spirit which exists within this government of the St. Lucia Labour Party. Mr. Speaker, earlier on, I was taken aback. I was flabbergasted, Mr. Speaker, when I experienced for the first time in this parliament the misbehavior of someone who wants to return to the helm of this country to lead this country. Mr. Speaker, when people gloat about crime, an attempt to associate crime with this government, crime begins with this behavior which we saw here today. When a member of parliament can defy the speaker, the disrespect, the disdain, the insult to this chair, this is where the crime starts. Our children watching today's sitting, Mr. Speaker, must be wondering, is that how we must behave? We must behave in, in a manner in which we refuse to sit down when we should, when the standing orders have been circulated, and as an intelligent, supposedly intelligent individual, you would have read it and understood it, and to be able to conform, um, um, sit in and behave in a manner that is acceptable. Mr. Speaker, today is the day, the first sitting of the parliament in which this government has demonstrated a commitment and a passion to the people of this country. The motions who, which have been moved today, Mr. Speaker, speaks to the theme of the government, people first. A government by the people, for the people, and in the interest of the people. And this is what this government is about, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, following on the foothills of the member who spoke early on, and speaking about the history in our buildings, to which this resolution speaks in a certain manner, the history of buildings. You know, just before you came up, Mr. Speaker, I reflected on the cathedral for which the fourth item, I believe the fourth item, speaks to the restoration of the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the cathedral, Mr. Speaker, was formally opened in 1894. The history is right there, Mr. Speaker, and that's what we are speaking about, to preserve the history of our country, to be able to look back to see where we came from, and not just where we are going. You hear some people with all their fancy talk, sweet talk, sweet chalk and fancy talk, fancy talk and sweet chalk, sweet chalk and fancy talk. You hear them all the time speaking about building a new St. Lucia. It's not about building a new St. Lucia. It's about preserving St. Lucia and building on that preservation to bring the ideals that we stand for, the, 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 the humility, Mr. Speaker, and of course, the pride and joy that we deserve to have as a people. That's what we need in this country. So when we speak, Mr. Speaker, you can see that this resolution, which is before us, the resolution on the Community Tourism Program Project, Mr. Speaker, you can see in every aspect, the intention is to build on what existed before. Mm -hmm. You take the Denry Fish Fiesta. In 2000, Mr. Speaker, when it started as a simple initiative, Mr. Speaker, there is, there is actually potential beyond what they have experienced so far. And this is what this is about, building on that experience. The issue of CMOS experience, Mr. Speaker, in Prale. We have seen what has happened in this whole CMOS industry, the manner in which, Mr. Speaker, it has unfolded. To date, I know of one or two individuals who have gone beyond our shores. I know of a young lady who have moved from St. Lucia to Miami and promoting her product in Miami and gaining a presence in supermarkets in Miami and moving beyond Miami into other areas. This is what we are talking about, Mr. Speaker. The Mon lay by, Mr. Speaker a place I frequented when I lived at the Mon, and the parliamentary rep knows that area very well. Uh, in, you did, eh? And in those days, Mr. Speaker, as a young man, I heard a, a particular member today ask, 
How many of you have had your own business? Mr. Speaker, can you imagine this? Can you imagine the insult that this member has, uh, is, is invoking on us? Mr. Speaker, I live at the Mon, to the back of the Governor General's residence. And every season when the cruise ship industry, when the, when the season opened, we made cups and other craft items out of bamboo, painted them with crayons and vanished, polished, and went at the Mon Lebai. It had nothing, just the view. And we sold to tourists our little souvenirs, 50 cents, 75 cents, just to make a dollar, Mr. Speaker. What we are seeing here, again, is a tradition, a tradition enshrined in that community for which the government, over the past years, started off first by formalizing the, the location, putting in some toilet facilities, and then building the viewing deck. We are seeing now some more effort being put, investment being placed in there to be, provide a much more comfortable area. The cathedral, Mr. Speaker, this cathedral, Mr. Speaker, is a landmark, not just a cast trees. It's a landmark for our country. People come to visit the cathedral because they read about the cathedral. They read the history of the cathedral. And it's not about just religion. It is about what stands out, what made us as a people of St. Lucia. That's what it is. That's right. But when you have people who don't understand the history. That's right. When you have people who are not enshrined in the culture, who don't understand what the people went through, the trials and tribulations, the bread, freedom, and justice, as my leader would say. That's right. That's right. When you have people who don't understand these things, Mr. Speaker, they are prepared to demolish. That's so they bring the demolition crew and demolish and cannot tell us why they're demolishing. But Mr. Speaker, this government, for those who believe it will collapse, if it had collapsed yet, it will never collapse. It will never collapse. For those who believe they can target us one by one and take us down, they will never succeed. Because when they attack us, each one of us stand and take it for the team. When they attack me, I take it for the team. When they attack the Prime Minister, he takes it for the team. And that is the behavior, Mr. Speaker, the culture of this government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to commend the Minister, the Prime Minister, for this bold initiative. This bold initiative of saying we need to filter down that tourism dollar into the communities. Not just the villages, into the communities. So that people in La Clary, in my constituency, who have the asset of the shock bay, can look down the future and say, let us see how we can utilize that bay. Who have the asset of VG Peninsula with a lighthouse, the guiding light of the marinas who came into the city, of, into the Bay of Castries, that light to reinstate the lighthouse, to provide that guiding light in and out of the harbor, a safe light in and out of the harbor. This is the opportunity this presents, Mr. Speaker. How do we utilize this? How do we utilize this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to revive, to revive and bring life, Mr. Speaker, to the shock reef, which is virtually dead now? These are some of the initiatives, Mr. Speaker, that this brings to us, and I embrace it, and I see merit in its presentation. In closing, Mr. Speaker, we didn't have, and I didn't have an opportunity to contribute to the previous motion. But, Mr. Speaker, one aspect which was mentioned in that motion was the matter of land management. One of the things, Mr. Speaker, we are looking at, and we've already started introducing or instituting, is to ensure that when government acquires land for certain projects, that the cost of the land is factored into the cost of the project. Mm -hmm. So if govern government acquires a piece of land for the construction of a playing field, the, the cost of the playing field must reflect that of the cost of preparing it and the cost of the acquisition. Likewise, any other thing. We have started, Mr. Speaker, in that when the government acquires land for Wasco, 
we don't only just acquire the land and pay it and hand it over to Wasco, but it is factored into Wasco's um, commitment and they would pay for the cost of the land. The question of bus stops, the leader, the member on the other side here, spoke of bus stops and the, the untidiness of bus stops. He, that's a fact. But Mr. Speaker, we have I've just instructed my department to design a bus stop, a bus stop that can be used as a, what I call a center for commercial activity. And I want to be very clear on this one. It is a bus stop with a kind of 7-Eleven in it, one or two outlets or concessions, where it would provide services to early morning persons who are, tra who are traveling, who are going to work, who probably didn't have a time to, to, to get coffee, who probably need a sandwich, who probably can get, probably they wake up with a headache, may be able to get a painkiller. A kind of 7-Eleven convenience location, not to, uh, to allow people to gather to shop, but to allow those who utilize the bus shelter to be able to get those services. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, one of the concerns we've had with bus shelters is the potential of crime. In some instances, persons have been attacked at certain locations, certain bus shelters, because of the darkness. So if we're able to build those bus shelters, design them in a particular way, that they can have those services, have the, the toilet facilities, Mr. Speaker, it provides also a sense of security to those individuals who will use it late at night. So you're not just standing at the bus shelter alone, fearful of who may come to attack you, but the fact that there is a concession there, somebody who is there or two persons who are there will deter persons from any attack. So we're looking at this, Mr. Speaker, and I'm hoping that we can do this um, uh, um, very soon and to begin to at least have one prototype, one pilot project, so that we can provide those kind of services. So, Mr. Speaker, I stand proud in support of this motion. I stand proud in support of the opportunities it will bring to St. Lucians. And I stand proud in the fact that it's been done by a government that has the conscience, a government that has the passion, a government that is prepared to take bold decisions in the interests of the overall social and economic development of our country. I thank you.